wanna know what's really going on we'll search for the answers and question it all turn your televisions off cause you're being brainwashed 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 if you wanna know what's really going on we'll search for the answers and question it all turn your televisions off cause you're being brainwashed brainwashed Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming back to another broadcast over here at the Ellis Network. This is the second video of the three that I have promised you guys. And this video segment is going to be about Iran and the protest and current things that's been going on within that situation. Now, we've learned within the last couple of days that there's been protest. I do believe that they're going on their fifth or maybe even sixth night um, protesting straight. Last night it got very, very crazy over there. Um, there was a couple citizens, and this is this is where it gets insane. Um, there was a couple citizens in Iran that tried to run into a police station. And, of course, the police officer shot, killed a few of them. There's been over a dozen deaths in these protests or these riots, whatever ones you want to call them. And then also there's been hundreds of people being arrested. Now, we know within Iran and its government, the Iranian regime that runs right now, they support terrorist activities. You see Hezbollah, Hamas. Um, look at everything that's been going on from the Gaza Strip into Israel ever since the U.S. President Trump has called Jerusalem, Jerusalem the capital of Israel. No doubt has there's been airstrikes not airstrikes, but rocket shelling going from Gaza Strip over into Israel for roughly about two weeks now. Um, and no doubt Iran has been known to back forces up, such as Hezbollah and the Hamas groups that has been supporting these other groups doing so. We know that Sharia law, that's that's the law in the government and the judicial system that they believe in. Women has no freedoms. They have no rights. There are actually women over there are fighting for rights and freedoms. You know, and it kind of brings me back to all the women's right protesting that we've had, you know, within this year. You see some of these women protest wearing hijabs and saying that they support, you know, Islam and Muslims. And I don't think that they understand that, you know, yes, there is you know, Muslims and Islam Muslims, but the women over there that is in Sharia law or have to wear these hijabs, more than likely they're forced to based on where they're li living. We know that Iran is, again, a very heavy Islamic government regime. Um, so no doubt they issue Sharia law, I think, ever since 1969, maybe even 1979. Um, I believe it's in one of these articles. But we know that, you know, they're fighting for freedoms. Um, as we get in, in th through these articles real quick, we'll hear a little bit about economic freedoms, um, government repression, and also you see people fighting back against the uh, ideologies of Islam people that were born and raised in Iran that doesn't agree with it, they're actually out there starting to stand up. And I really want to say really quick, I'm not going to showcase the video. Um, I've seen the video. I've heard people commenting on it. You know, I've heard a little bit of diversity on it. Some people are saying that this video was posted, you know, a year or two ago. Other people are saying, no, it's current. There's no way here at the Ellis Network I have the power to vet that for you guys to say it's true. But the video shows a Royal Guard truck, the Ro the Iranian Royal Guard military running down protesters, running people over, killing them. Um, I would really hate to say that that happened in this protest, but if it did, that's definitely not cool. That's that's not cool, man. That That's just not cool. And even President Trump and Nikki Haley, they've been very verbal. President Trump's taking to Twitter, telling the Iranian government that they're that him and America is keeping an eye on how the Iranian regime handles the civil rights and the uh, protests and these citizens that's calling out for freedom. Um, 
Nikki Haley told I, uh, the UN that America is keeping an eye on Iran as well and that there are people crying and the world should not be silent for these people that's crying for freedom. She said that they're going to be issuing an emergency meeting with the UN in New York in coming days and then following after that, they were going to be going to Geneva to meet up with activist groups, um, civil rights, and find out if there's anything that they can do there. I'll, we'll get into that, that video. If you guys come back to the next video where I talk about China, I have everything set up for video play on that. Um, and I'll play that video as well where Nikki Haley does say that inside the UN. But anyway, so with all that being said, you know, let's go ahead and get some of the facts of why there are unrest in these Iran protests. Let's find out why they're protesting. Let's find out what's what's going on. All right. And as you can see a photo here, she looks like she's covering her face, you know, smoke. You know, I don't know if that's tear gas or whatnot. Um, but we do know that there's been clashes between the Iranian people and the Iranian uh, police force, military guard and all that. Demonstrations are the biggest in the country since 2009 when millions demanded the rerun of a disputed presidential election. And I can kind of vaguely remember some kind of issue back then. I don't really remember if it's the issue that I think of back in 2009. I'll have to go back and you know re-educate myself on that, which honestly, I highly doubt I will. <laughs> Just being honest here. Um, but... How widespread is the unrest? It's actually growing. It, it's actually really growing. It started off in one location, then it went to other suburbs. It's mainly happening in poor um, cities spread all throughout Iran. But here's um here's a current video. Let's see if it doesn't say when this video was taken. But let's go ahead and see what's going on. Let me turn up my speed, my music, my gain on my microphone. Let's see if we can get this footage. It kind of lo looks like a Baltimore protest. You guys remember when Freddie Gray got killed? The protest turned into something like this. People were burning stuff. That's not a protest anymore. That's a riot. setting stuff on fire, people covering their masks. See, it's not just here in America. Yeah, I'll see if I can pause that right there for you guys. Oh. Alright, listen to this. In یادش رفته که چند ماه پیش ملت تروریست نامید آقایی که امروز در آمریکا این آقایی که امریکا میخواد با مردم ما همدردی بکنه یادش رفته که چند ماه پیش ملت ایران را ملت تروریست نامید so no doubt, as you guys can see, that they are blaming, they are blaming United States and President Trump for causing these protests. Alright, so let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Since then, they have spread to some 50 cities and towns, including the capital of Tehran and sees tens of thousands of people take to the streets to vent their anger at the entire establishment. And if you guys look at the map right up underneath, it shows the white dots where all the protesting has been taking place. Um, let me go ahead and close this out. Again, I'm sorry guys, I'm still learning a little bit about my system. Um, the protests turned violent in a number of locations and state media report that at least 21 people have been killed in clashes with security forces. Hundreds have also been arrested. I said that earlier. Um, what do the protesters want? The demonstrators were initially about the failure of President Hassan Rouhani's government to revive Iran's struggling economy, addresses high unemployment and inflation, inflation and combat alleged corruption. Again, like I said, terrorist organizations, they're supporting it. 
they've made threats to the United States. Um, just recently, I think it was two, three weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, that Iran's uh, military general has come out and said that they are sending a warship to the Gulf of Mexico for the very first time ever on their way to Venezuela to strengthen better relationships with the Venezuelan people. Um, so no doubt do Iran have America in their scope and you just clearly see um, their government is pointing fingers towards the Americas, towards the American people and um, the American president for causing this outrage. I don't think it's really that, guys. I really think with what we see all around the world, you know, freedom is being protested everywhere on a on a major scale. We see, look at the Million March protest in London, the Anonymous March. Look at LGBT community marches, the um, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, the Patriots. I mean, like, every walk of any form of group is protesting nowadays. Um, so... This right here is going to talk about how the authorities, obviously you guys can see how they're responding, and it's saying that they appeared to show a degree of restraint. The protesters in Mashhad on Thursday were dispersed with water cannon and a small number of people were arrested. But as the protests spread, the clampdown intensified. Mr. Rohini, a moderate who agreed to deal with world powers in 2015 to limit Iran's nuclear government program to return to the lifting of economic sanctions, said on Sunday that the Iranians were absolutely free to criticize the government and protest. So again, they are saying that they have the freedom to do so, but is the Iranian government handling it like they should? Are they giving them their space and their freedom to do it? Um, again, what we're going to see here, I really don't think that's the case. I think they're really fighting against the protesters trying to actually silence them and actually try to give them the liberties to speak. Uh, Rohini said resolving Iran's problem would take time and called on people to help the government, but appeal failed to calm the situation. So no doubt, the Iranian people, they don't want to hear him talk no more. They're, they're done. You had since 2015, and you've done more supporting of terrorist activities that put the Iranian people and the Iranian families at grave danger. Um, the protesters are a range of slogan pro suggest a very variety of groups are taking part this seems to be a movement without national leaders but so far many of the protesters appear to have been poor unemployed people are just struggling to feed their families a recent BBC per Persian investigation found on average Iranians have become 15% poorer over the past decade and that their consumption of bread, milk, and red meat has decreased since between 30% and 50%. That's insane. The official unemployment rate is 12.4%, but in some parts of the country it is more than 60%. That's a big fucking gap. According to Interior Minister Dalriza Rahimi Fazli, again, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Young people, more than half the population is under 30, are affected particularly badly. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in. You know, I'm not trying to spend my whole broadcast on every article here. I'll post a, the article in the description. You guys can read everything else. But let's let's look at this video. Uh, most of you guys that's been following the Iran protests and the rioting has seen this video. And it, it's quite, you know, it brings up the idea of could there be more than what what's meets the eye, than what mainstream or even Iran is telling the world? Um, again, what we talked about earlier at the start of this video about how the women, you know, they're silenced. They're not allowed to, you know, express freedoms and rights, and they have to wear their faces covered. Well, this video showing a protester actually, in fact, not wanting to wear her hijab. And you can clearly see she's standing there waving it around like a flag in a protest. And she's being hailed as a hero. An Iranian woman has been hailed a hero after taking off her job in public place in an apparent protest against strict Islamic dress code. So not only economic and government military actions, 
Now they're even protesting strict Islamic dress code. Women standing on the platform waved the white flag in the middle of the street. The footage was posted by author Armin Navid B. Again, sorry if I said that wrong. Sources told me this woman has been arrested and detained. He later reported on Twitter. So this woman takes off her hijab. She gets up on this statue or this block where she can be standing higher than most people. She takes off her hijab. She puts it on a stick and starts waving it. That's very, very bold in Iran to do. So is there something deeper going on? Are they actually protesting Islam foe? Are they sick and tired of Islam getting in everyday affairs? Are they fighting for freedom? That could very well be possible. Um, it says, I, I, Iranian women have been forced in the state to cover their faces since 1979. Since the 1979 revolution. Remember earlier I said it was either 1979 or 1969. I couldn't remember. There's a revolution that happened and since then women has been forced. Again, Islam forced Sharia law. There, that's not freedom when you're forced. Again, like I said, look at North Korea. You're forced to believe in certain things. Um, again, enemies Iran. It, this right here basically talks about what we just seen in that video about Redeem talking about enemies, blaming the United States, talking about it. Um, and here's a little bit more about hundreds of being arrested. This Anna O'Donoghue, I don't know who she is. This is my first time actually coming to her page, but everything that I'm seeing that she's talking about in this one article, I've been seeing confirmed within the last couple of days. So she's taken the last couple of days of information and she's bundling it up into one post. I, I greatly appreciate that. That makes things a lot easier for us talkers here on YouTube that share this information for you guys. Um, again, uh, state TV reported that six people were killed during an attack on a police station in the town of Quahadran. And clashes sparked by rioters who tried to steal guns from the station. Again, that's fucking retarded to try to do, but they're desperate. Desperate people do desperate things. Um, TV reports also said that an 11-year-old boy and a 20-year-old man were killed in the town of... Um, I can't even pronounce that, but y'all can see clearly what that says. While well, a number of member of Iranian's parliamentary Revo um, revolutionary guard was killed in the town. That's that's sad. That's, that's really sad. The madness over there just needs to stop. Now you got children being murdered over... You know, protesting for freedoms and rights. I mean, come on. Um, so anyways, I'll post that link. And then we'll, you know, I'll post this link as well. This is talking about, you know, what, what he has said, how the authorities responded. You know, basically everything else that's going into um, coexistence with what we have talked about throughout this whole video. And then also it goes into how the international community... Um, with President Trump, there's related topics. I mean, the story, there's so much information out there, guys, that even if you guys don't believe what I'm saying, you guys can go read, and I'm sure you guys will come across a source that you find credible, that you believe, and it's pretty much saying the same thing here, guys. So, again, stay stay tuned. Click that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification for future uploads. I got one more video that I'm going to bring out to you guys, and it's about China and North Korea. Alright guys, stay safe and heads up for the next one. See you guys soon.